Hello, my name is Paul Yoder, field agronomist for Pioneer. In today's video, I want to talk to you about corn populations and where we stand today. The field behind me as I drove up here and I looked out my driver window, I was anticipating finding some pretty good stands. This particular field and the grower I know planted it at around 36,000. After flying my drone and taking stand counts with it, as well as taking physical stand counts, this particular field, I'm finding an average of around 24,500. If you have fields like this, as you've been driving past them, but you haven't walked out into that field, I strongly encourage you to take time and walk out to your fields and take some, take some stand counts. Or better yet, feel free to call any of us here at Pioneer or your Pioneer seed agent, as they more than likely have a drone with the software that I have, and they can give you a full report of your field as to what your final stand is. But you may be asking, you know, in this particular case, it looks fantastic. Where did it go from 36,000 to 24,500? I'm finding this in multiple fields this year. And in a lot of cases, I'm finding that one to five foot gaps. Within that one to five foot gaps, I'm finding anything from a lot of corkscrew plants under the soil. I'm finding a lot of plants that leafed out under soil and actually almost made it to the soil surface and then just basically went sideways and never did make it up. In other cases, I'm finding that the leaf tips of that corn plant is still embedded into the soil, even though the top part of the plant is above the soil, nice and green, but it's still very tightly wrapped. At this stage of growth, more than likely, it's either gonna be a weed, if it is able to continue to merge out of the ground and leaf out, or more than likely it's going to die and not make it. So you may be asking, you know, why is that? For the most part, it seemed like the crop went in fairly well. Well, in those gaps where we have those issues of either the corkscrew appearance, leafing out underground, or the buggy whip, as I was just talking about, a lot of cases that is due to the fact that the mesocotyl and the coleoptile were, were damaged of some aspect. When a lot of the corn was planted in April, we did have cooler than normal uh, temperatures, and even the first part of May. I don't believe that any of this is related to the cold inhibition that people talk about. That's related to the first 24 to 48 hours of the cold drink of water. I don't think that's the problem that we're having this year. What I'm finding is a lot of soil crusting, which caused restriction on the coleoptiles is trying to push through. And that's part of the reason of the corkscrew and or leafing out of the ground. Same goes with any restriction that's gonna put on that mesocotyl and or the coleoptile. Again, we'll create that corkscrew or leafing out of the ground. So again, with the cooler temperatures at nighttime, even though we had decent daytime temperatures, and in some cases the soil temperature was hovering, you know, in the, the low 50s or the high 40s, there was enough probably variation in places, especially in these gaps, where the outer layer of tissue of that mesocotyl or the coleoptile was damaged. And if that tissue around, the circumference around that, if there's any part of that, that was maybe slightly damaged to where the temperature got down to around 46 degrees. And on that side, it just made it weaker. The elasticity of it was weakened. As that mesocotyl and the, and the coleoptile continue to push up through that soil profile, because I have found a lot of soil crusting, cloddier soils, sidewall compaction, possibly the press wheels was maybe a little bit too tight and given some compaction there. Anything that, that caused the restriction on those two things, the mesocotyl and the, the, mes the mesocotyl and the coleoptile, and weakening that layer of tissue, the circumference around it, that is what's gonna cause the corkscrewing, or that is what's gonna cause because of that weak spot or not being as elastic, that's where it's going to split apart and you begin that leafing out underground. So, biggest point that I wanna make here is if you have cornfields that look like this as you're driving past them, but you haven't been out it, please take time to go out there and take some stand counts. You may be surprised what you get. I'm hoping that it's the perfect stand. I, have, I hope that you have nothing to worry about, but I'd rather you be aware of it now than later on at harvest when the population is low and that yield just quite isn't where you thought it would be. If you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out to any of us here at Pioneer. And if you need some fields flown, again, feel free to reach out to any of us or in particular your Pioneer seed agent. Thank you, stay safe, and call if you need anything. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. 
Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.